I just, you know, I say on here sometimes that there is too much emphasis in this country on people's feelings. You can't say that. It'll hurt someone's feelings. I usually follow up that statement with more people in this country need their feelings hurt. Now, that doesn't mean that I think that people should be attacked with no justification. I'm just saying, in today's climate, too many people are having to watch what they say in the fear that someone somewhere will be offended by it. You grow through pain. You don't grow by being coddled. The teachers that I learned the most from in school and the ones that I remember are the teachers that were the toughest on me. The teachers that weren't afraid to tell me, your work is garbage. This book report is the worst I've ever seen. I didn't learn anything from teachers that gave me easy grades. Of course, Teachers are not allowed to say things like that anymore. You will hurt little Tommy's feelings. So we have a generation of kids and young adults who are soft. Participation trophies. I was talking to a friend the other day. He owns his own business. And we were talking about the company that I just left a couple of weeks ago. I just left a family-owned company. It was started by the grandfather, passed down to the father, and is now in transition being passed down to the third generation, a kid that's in his early to mid-20s. Family-owned businesses, in most cases, they fall apart when passed down to the third generation. Why is that? Because the third generation has been coddled most of their life. They were born millionaires. The grandfather had to grind to build the company late nights, 100-hour weeks, sacrifice. The father watched his dad go through of all that and was along for the ride. He had to work hard to maintain what his dad built. By the time the business is passed down to the third generation, the hard work is done. The company's established. I feel like that's where we are in America today. People my age, our grandparents or great-grandparents, they went through World War II, maybe even the later ends of the Great Depression. They went through hard times. Our parents, Vietnam, the civil rights era in the late 60s, early 70s, they went through hard times. My generation, 9-11, the war in Iraq and Afghanistan. Even still, though, our, my generation, our times weren't as hard as our parents and grandparents. And there are a lot of millennials that are soft. If you want a prime example of how soft and easily offended America has become, look no further than what's happening right now to Jeff Van Gundy. Say what you will about Jeff Van Gundy. He's not my favorite NBA guy. But he is one of the few people left at ESPN that has no filter. He says whatever comes to his mind. Now, I don't know if he's woke I couldn't find any examples of wokeness in Jeff Van Gundy, but I didn't really look that hard either. I damn sure know that his brother, Stan, is woke. Stan Van Gundy. I don't know when he became so radicalized, but he's on the level of Skip Bayless and Max Kellerman. Jeff Van Gundy? I don't know how much longer his career at ESPN is going to last. I don't know the details of his contract, but what I do know right now ESPN is in a position where they can't afford to have anyone rock the boat. With all the accusations of lack of diversity and internal race war going on, now is not the time to say anything controversial on ESPN's airwaves. Jeff Van Gundy, I don't think he cares. And good for him. I respect him for it. We need more Jeff Van Gundys, people who are not afraid to say what's on their mind. A couple of weeks ago, during the Western Conference Finals, Jay Crowder slapped Paul George in the face contesting a shot. Might have even poked him in the eye as well, but it's a typical play that happens sometimes in the NBA. Whether or not Jay Crowder intentionally did it, or it was just incidental contact, who the hell knows. What it was not was a flagrant foul. 
except in the 2021 NBA. The referees, they review the play, call it a flagrant foul. Jeff Van Gundy reacted to the call and said, I am sick of the sissification of this game. On point analysis, if you ask me, everyone knows the NBA is much softer than it was 20 to 25 years ago. Oh, but that comment, that comment was a problem. The Wokers took exception to it. You can't use the word sissification. That's homophobic. Some nudnik over at SB Nation said Jeff Van Gundy took his commentary into a problematic direction. Does anyone not take things in context anymore? What was homophobic about what Jeff Van Gundy said? The word sissy? Are we not allowed to say that word anymore? Is that on the Wokers list of banned terms? This is another example of these people trying to silence speech. It's getting to the point, no matter what you say, someone is going to have a problem with it. Someone's going to get their feelings hurt. And woke Twitter, along with the woke media, is going to come after you. It happened again last night during the NBA Finals. Late in the third quarter, Devin Booker misses a shot, got his own rebound, and scored. It was a great play. Tough play to make. Put the Suns back up 10 points to close out the third quarter. After it happened, Jeff Van Gundy said, he's got an edge to him. He looks like a choir boy, but he plays like a hoodlum. Now, when you take this in context, like people with common sense do, it's easy to figure out what Jeff Van Gundy meant, what he was saying. He's saying that Devin Booker looks like he's not dangerous. He looks like he's safe, but in reality, he's a tough dude. You don't want to take him lightly. He's not someone to be messed with. Jeff Van Gundy meant this as a compliment. I don't think there was anything malicious, no malicious intent with what he said. But you know the Wokers, everything is about race. You can't have a white man call a black man a hoodlum. That's racist. Like there aren't any white hoodlums out there. Ryan Clark, NFL analyst over at ESPN, he took exception with the choir boy remark. He said he just called Devin Booker light-skinned. That's certainly code. Uh, code for what? Please educate me. Obviously, I'm not enlightened. I'm not on your level. What is that code for? When did choir boy equate to light-skinned? Was Jeff Van Gundy sending a secret message to the others that are asleep out there? What was the message? I don't get it. Please, enlighten me. Tell me what it was. Justin Ellis. I don't know who the hell he is. He's got a blue check mark on Twitter, which means one of two things. He's either a public figure or he's woke. I've never heard of him before, so I'm going to default to the latter. Justin Ellis said, Jeff Van Gundy saying Booker looks like a choir boy, but plays like a hoodlum in 2021 in an ESPN NBA broadcast team already trying to pull itself through racism. I guess he's talking about Rachel Nichols too. I listened to the Rachel Nichols audio. I didn't hear anything racist on the tape. And I didn't take what Jeff Van Gundy said as racist either. Again, you have to take these things in context. That is a concept foreign to wokers. These people are always looking to be victimized. It's a victim mentality. And when you have that mentality, you are always on the hunt for something that can garner you sympathy that you can use to your advantage. Were Jeff Van Gundy's comments tone deaf? Yes, sure. But come on. I mean, can we get past this already? Every day, there is a new incident, a new story about something someone said that is being misconstrued as racism. This is why that word has no meaning anymore. I hope Jeff Van Gundy does not fold to pressure and issue some lame apology. I don't agree with apologizing when you are backed into a corner. I don't agree with apologizing under pressure. Just because the comments were tone deaf doesn't mean there was any malicious intent behind them. He meant it as a damn compliment. I've been saying this all week, but ESPN, ESPN created this monster. They did this to themselves. 
They have created this toxic environment where every word spoken on their network is dissected and analyzed. People are making careers out of finding or making up racial issues at ESPN. I saw one comment that said, Jeff Van Gundy is not helping to alleviate diversity concerns at ESPN. Go watch the video I uploaded yesterday afternoon on ESPN and diversity. There is not a diversity problem at ESPN. There is a woke problem at ESPN. This is not about race. This is about them shutting down your free speech. This continues to happen where they constantly attack people for things they say. What they're trying to do, they are trying to create an environment where people are afraid to say anything at all. Anyway, what do you guys think of Jeff Van Gundy's comments? Were you offended by it? Or do you think he meant it as a compliment? What do you think of the reaction from woke Twitter and members of the media? Sound off in the comments below. Make sure to like and subscribe. Click the notification bell to receive all notifications from the channel. Best way to contact me is by email at btlkc84 at gmail.com. KC underscore BTL84 on Twitter. I'll see you guys later.